During his Sunday Angelus, Pope Francis explained the gospel passage of a healing and raising of a dead child by Jesus. These two episodes, a healing and resurrection, have a single center, the faith. The message is clear and can be summed up in one question. Do we believe that Jesus can heal us and can awaken us from the dead? The whole gospel is written in the light of faith. Jesus is risen. He has conquered death. And because of this victory, we will be resurrected. This faith, who for the first Christians was secure, could tarnish and become uncertain to the point that some confuse resurrection with reincarnation. After the Angelus, he greeted some of the groups present in St. Peter's Square. Merci beaucoup pour vous. A comprehensive agreement was signed by the Holy See in the state of Palestine on Friday. It may serve the twofold goal of stimulating peace in the Middle East and providing a model for similar treaties with other Middle East countries. The peace process can move forward only if it is directly negotiated between the parties. The Vatican-Palestine agreement recognizes freedom of religion in Palestine and outlines the rights and obligations of the church, its agencies, and its personnel in the territory. The comprehensive agreement follows upon a basic agreement which was signed in February of 2000. Last week, Pope Francis received the 79th Prince and Grand Master of the Sovereign Military Order of Malta, Fra Matthew Festing, in his audience. The Knights of Malta are the world's oldest surviving order of chivalry. Their headquarters is in Rome and its membership spans over 13,000 members and 80,000 volunteers. The Knights are the oldest religious order whose majority of members are of lay status. They are called to conduct themselves as to give a Christian example in their private and public lives and to be in service of the sick. <laughs> Buddhists and Catholics from the United States held an interreligious dialogue meeting for the first time near Rome last week. It focused on the themes of suffering, liberation, and fraternity. The five-day meeting included 46 Buddhist and Catholic participants from New York, Chicago, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Washington, D.C. In an opening address to the group, Pope Francis expressed the importance of the meeting with the words, in this historic moment, which is marked by wounds of war and hatred, these small gestures are the seed of peace and fraternity. The Holy See Press Office also released the Instrumentum Laboris, or working document, of the upcoming Synod. Cardinal Lorenzo Baldesseri, Secretary General of the Synod of Bishops, noted that it is based on the previous Synod's document and that his office itself drafted many of its paragraphs, based on the responses which it received from bishops' conferences around the world to a questionnaire it had sent out. The working document is 147 paragraphs, and its three parts will serve as a basis for the three weeks of discussions at this autumn's gathering of bishops at the Vatican.